let's return now to that earlier story. New South Wales has become the latest state to embark on a treaty process, appointing three commissioners to conduct a year-long listening tour to work out how to do it. Joining me now is Warren Mundine, the Indigenous Forum Director at the Centre for Independent Studies. Warren, good to catch up. Great uh, to catch up. What exactly is a listening tour? That's a good question because if, if we take the track record so far, it shows like in the voice campaign they went out to a listening tour and they didn't listen mm. because they got flogged in that boat. Look, my advice is to, to Chris, look, come on, mate. Stop wasting money, you know. We know what the issues are within Aboriginal communities. We know how to fix things and get things better. Setting up these talk fests, talk, it's uh, just a waste of time. And, and even if, if you go ahead with it, it has to be a vote for the people of New South Wales. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what the result is. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty <laughs> obvious. It's, and this is the thing, though, because you spoke about uh, actual... Uh, trying to fix Aboriginal matters, issues in the, in, within the community. But... Will a treaty do that? No. Is this going to solve the problems that are out there? Because New South Wales is one now of many states and territories forging their own path. None of them are going to fix anything. I'll tell you that now. All it is is going to do is fix the hip pocket of the people who are sitting on those committees. Mm. You know, we saw in uh, South Australia only... Um, only 90% of, uh, only 10%, sorry, 10% of Aboriginals actually voted in that election. 90% mm. didn't. That's a big big, no, we don't want this. Mm -hmm. uh, Victoria, <clears throat> they've had two elections now, 7% of Aboriginals voted in that. So that's 93% of Aboriginals didn't bother, don't want it. It's not going to get anyone, help anyone. It is, it's just a total waste of time. Let's start looking at the crime rate. Let's start getting education. Let's start getting jobs and dealing with those governance issues that need to be done. Stop Stop with these stupid, stupid conversations. Yeah, of course, we're having them, we're having them over and over with the, the states over and over again. And it divides the community. The community's already voted. They voted on the voice and it was quite clear a treaty was in that voice. They made it quite clear, no, we want to come together as a nation. Mm. we don't want to be divided. Mm. And I spoke about this uh, in my editorial, Warren, about two local councils, one in Western Australia and one in South Australia, that have actually backflipped on their decision to abolish Australia Day celebrations and hold ceremonies a few days after or a day after Australia Day. Uh, and they did this through a survey. They actually asked the people, <laughs> would you believe, what do you want? Uh, unheard of. I know. What a, what a revolutionary <laughs> idea in a liberal democracy. <laughs> we, oh, we're going to ask our, our constituents what they think. That's what Chris Minns should bloody be looking at as yeah. well in regard to the treaty. Yeah. We want to come together mm. as a nation and we've got great things to celebrate on Australian Day. Mm. It's about the Australian people. Uh, we've built a multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-faith. Uh, multi uh, we've done multi-everything and we've brought all these people together, mm. Indigenous people, uh, you know, the uh, migrants who have come here yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the British institutions that we built, and we're one of the greatest countries in the world. Otherwise, why are people trying to get on boats to come here? Mm. Millions of people want to be here mm. because we have got a great country. So why don't we celebrate us? Mm. Australia Day is about us, so let's do it. And what, uh, what role do you think that Labor federally play in this? I mean, they fobbed this issue off to the councils because they were too mm. gutless to actually have a proper yeah. debate and a proper discussion about Australia Day. Now you've got all these councils completely confused and spineless at that as well. I mean, as we said, they're not asking ratepayers, the constituents, what they want. They're making their own decisions. Yeah, but, I mean, we're, we need leadership on this, one. Exactly. That's what we've got to have. We've got to get leadership and say, look, hey... Listen to the people out there. Listen to the constituents. Listen to all the Australians. We want to celebrate today. Look, they celebrate everything else. It's LBGT, yeah. whatever it is. Mm. Uh, that's fine. That's great. Uh, they celebrate, uh, you know, different uh, ethnic groups, national days and everything. Why don't we celebrate what we have achieved in this country? Mm -hmm. And we, I'm talking about the Australian people, we get on well. We get on... We, we're building this incredible great country. Is it perfect? No, there's no country perfect, but at least we're moving in the right direction and mm. actually make, you know, there's no discriminatory laws in Australia no, anymore. No, no. Uh, there's opportunities. In fact, we spend billions of dollars helping Aboriginal people and other people to, you know, into jobs and into housing and uh, wide other things. Why aren't we celebrating that? It's a really, really good question, a really good point.